All right, hello again. Um, so today I wanted to talk about social anxiety. Um, social anxiety, for those who don't know, is basically the phenomenon of getting um, mild discomfort or some sort of sense of uh, fear or um, general uh, general reluctance to be around other people. Um, and this is something that affects me negatively. Um, it's not, I don't have a huge amount of social anxiety, um, especially around circles where I feel generally accepted, like libertarian circles or like comic book circles or, you know, just kind of nerdy, weirdo subcultures in general. I typically don't feel too out of place. I don't mind if there's a lot of people around me. But it does influence my choices and my behavior um, to such an extent that sometimes it is the determining factor. Um, like tomorrow, uh, like technically today is Halloween. And, um, and um, you know, I, I could go out. There's a nearby block party or whatever. And I, I could technically go to it if I really wanted to. Um, but, you know, besides it being kind of a hassle to get over there, my other, one of my other immediate thoughts is, wow, that's, that's a lot of people. And it is a lot of people. And just kind of thinking about it makes me a little, yeah. Um, and like part of that is I'm, I'm introverted. You know, I, I don't, um, I'm not hugely into like, you know, basically social interactions don't fuel me. They, you know, drain energy or whatever you want to say. They, they take battery out of me. Um. That was a poor way to explain what I mean, but but you get it. Um, and so you know, just thinking about all those people, it doesn't it doesn't really excite me. It's just kind of like a, uh, all those people and they're drinking and they're partying and poss probably doing drugs, and you know none of those things I'm really interested in. Like I'm not morally judging people for doing them, but they're also not something I'm super into. Um, so sorry, I'm just trying to keep my eye away from the the. the uh, camera that way my my glasses don't reflect it it's kind of an annoying problem anyway um so social anxiety i have kind of become more cognizant of it in the la in the past like few years or whatever um where i'll you know i want to you know i'll think about going outside or i'll think about doing a thing and you know if it's already difficult like if it's already something that I'm going to have trouble with transportation-wise, and that's not unusual for me because I don't have a car and I'm not a very good driver, um, then, you know, one of the other deciding factors is uh, how many people will be there and, like, who, what kind of people will be there and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it, it does kind of inhibit my ability to, you know, to live, to, to have functioning relationships with other people. Um, again, you know, it's mild, but it does, it, you know, especially when I'm on the, like I've been kind of saying when I'm on the margins, um, it'll it'll impact me negatively and basically push me towards a no, I won't go outside because people. Um, you know, and I, I can overcome this. Uh, some of the things that I do to overcome it are just to kind of center myself and say, look, you know, it is, it is it, you know, they are people, but they're just people. And they're most likely not going to see me as anything but slightly weird. Um, like I remember one of my coworkers... Um, <laughs> When I started working at the convenience store that I used to work at, he was like, um, you know, during my last shift with him, he was like, you know, Nick, when you first came here, I thought you were kind of weird, but, you know, you ended up being an all right guy and, you know, you did you did okay for yourself. And that was very nice of him. But it was also kind of like, yeah, I think to most people, my Asperger's um, comes off just as me being kind of abnormal, kind of weird, um, because I think, I think differently than most people do. And this also causes me some social anxiety because... When I say things that are weird, or when I do things that are weird, or like sometimes I don't even notice it because I don't have a sense of uh, social awareness that other people do, um, and so like, like, uh, like I was tabling at the, at the for this group like um, a few days ago, and my friend was like, you, you know, kind of jokingly like talking to people kind of loudly he's like hey you want to buy some anarchy you know I want to get some dank anarchy and you know it was funny and I appreciated it but it was also like it made me feel a little uncomfortable and I, I did kind of say hey you know don't do that that makes me feel uncomfortable and, and he was just joking around it wasn't a big deal but doing things that draw attention I guess kind of makes me nervous and I was already like tabling publicly um, and I don't usually present anarchist ideas to the public. I haven't really done that since high school or, or college, I guess you could say. And that was, geez, four, four or five years ago. 
Um, yeah, I think four years ago now. Um, so, yeah, and I mean, it's not because I don't want to. It's just because, you know, I'm poor. I don't have good mobility. Um, you know, I'm not a student, so I don't get to speak to the public in that way. Um, none of my jobs have ever really revolved around anarchism. Um, you know, the most public thing I do is a write for C4SS, the Center for Stateless Society. And, you know, that's not exactly super public. So, so I was already kind of nervous. And while I was talking to somebody, like, I noticed it, it was a little, it was, um, it wasn't even conscious, but my, 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 my right leg was just going crazy, like, bouncing up and down. Because I was really nervous. Because, you know, I don't usually, because I'm very on, I'm a very honest person. And I won't, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, like, lie to you or, like, you know, you know, when, when I talk to people, I'll say, like, I'm a radical libertarian, um, you know, closer to, to anarchism or something like that. Like, if I trust people or if I if I think that they, you know, might make good conversation or something, you know. I don't, like, just walk up to people and say, hey, I'm an anarchist, you know. Or, like, if people, you know, somebody who I don't even know asks me about politics, I'll go, you know, oh, I'm like a libertarian, more like a, you know, not like a libertarian party, but more like a, a radical libertarian. Like, I really want to, <laughs> like, that old... I don't know if it's an old saying, but the popular saying among libertarians is kind of like, you know, uh, shrink the government down to such a size that you could drown in a bathtub or something. I don't, it's kind of a morbid thing, but um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess I could say something like that. And I kind of have, but it's always difficult to balance feeling anxious about like conversations about like really big political stuff that people are really passionate about and like stuff I'm really passionate about and knowledgeable about and it's hard not to go off on tangents or like long diatribes um, about anarchism or whatever because I'm really passionate about it but on the other hand I don't want to like be pushy and there are the, all these like social cues and social things that I should be aware of but I'm not always aware of um, it, it becomes really difficult um, part of my social anxiety also comes in when uh, my Asperger's and my social anxiety meet because I get anxious that I'm going to mess up um, I've been on dates before, or date not dates, where there are these pauses and they're really awkward for me because I'm just like, man, if we're, that's the thing with neuro, I'm like thinking in my head more or less, like that's the thing with neurotypicals, right? Like if we're not talking, then we're not connecting and oh my God, I have to say something. <laughs> it has to be interesting quick. Otherwise, like they won't want to go on a date with me again. And of course that wasn't true. And, you know, I have gone on other dates with this person, but, um, you know, it, it's just like a, it's like a, you know, it's a, it's a fear, and it's something I have to sort of face. Like, there are other sorts of communication besides, um, besides like, you know, verbal communication. Um, so I, you know, I have to come to terms with that, and I can't always just say, well, there's a, there was a quiet moment, and I have to do something about it. Um, social anxiety can also come into play with family. Um, not really with my close family, but mostly with my extended family who I don't really know terribly well, so sometimes I get sort of anxious about, like, the boundaries of discussion and, um, and like, talk and what I can and can't say. Um, like, most of my, most of my extended family, I think, are, like, vaguely aware that, like, I'm political and that, like, I have, like, some radical political beliefs and that, like, I'm an introvert and I re like reading books. Like, I've always brought books to family, uh, extended family gatherings because I... I mean, I don't mind in, interacting with any of my family, really. They're all pretty nice people, generally speaking. But um, that sounded like a caveat. It wasn't a caveat. Um, but, um, but anyway, um, you know, and, but I like to be prepared, I guess you could say, and have a book and just delve myself into a world where I don't have to think about things. It's a really nice thing about books, and I'm sure that I'm not exactly novel, no pun intended, I swear to God, in saying this. But books bring you into their world so you don't have to deal with your own, um, which can be nice sometimes, even if the world that you're um, dealing with in the book isn't very nice either. Um, like right now I'm reading Alexander Berkman's Prison Memoirs, and it's not exactly a happy tale. S surprise. So yeah, um, that's some stuff about social anxiety. I, I kind of want to keep these videos to around 10 minutes because I don't want to go too long. But... Um, there's other stuff with social anxiety. Sometimes I can get that with friends or people who I really care about because I get worried I'll mess up. But usually when I'm actually around those people, um, I'll calm down. I'll say, you know, they're, even if I did mess up, they're not going to judge me harshly unless I like, seriously mess up. But that doesn't often happen. I just kind of imagine it, you know. I am a warrior. A warrior, not a warrior. Um, I'm a warrior warrior. Try saying that ten times fast. Um, 
But anyway, um, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll probably do another, so, uh, almost said social anxiety, I'll probably do another video on mental illness um, tomorrow, um, it will probably again be in the morning, but whatever. Uh, thinking about doing it on suicidal ideation, so that ought to be a little emotional for me, but we'll see. Um, that's what I'm planning on, but maybe my mind will change. Uh, also, um, I want to shout out to Little Karibo, who does the We're Still Here series. Um, he, I was watching one of his videos last night. It's a series on depression. I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, but if I did, you know, forgive me. My memory's not the greatest sometimes. Um, but he has a series called We're Still Here. I'll link it in the description. Um, but, um, it's, it's a great series about depression and dealing with mental illness. And, um, I have been watching it for a long time now. And he did one last, I watched one last night or whatever it was. And, um... And it just got me thinking to do one on mental illness. And so here I am, kind of doing a series on mental illness, mostly due to Little Karibo, but I've been kind of wanting to talk about this for a while. And in lieu of therapy, these videos will have to do for now. Um, I'm obviously not condoning this as a method of therapy, but it, like I said last time, it can be therapeutic. So that's what I'm hoping it is for me. I kind of had a rough day because um, I made this silly mistake on an article and really hit my self-esteem really hard even though the mistake was easy if someone else had made it I wouldn't have been critical about them and you know it just yeah it just made me I guess to wrap up it kind of made me you know uh, feel like a failure I guess which is which is you know it's silly it was just a small mistake and I edited it and I'll post a correction on C4SS later today but I don't know it really brought down my day but I'm doing a bit better now so I watched some funny videos and I've just been relaxing for the past few hours. So anyway, I've been talking too much. Um, thanks for listening. See you in the next one.